Life is a rat race, time is money, and deadlines are super strict these days. That's why you need some After Effects hacks to speed up your workflow. Luckily, we have 10 tips just waiting here for you. Let's dive in. If you're working heavy with After Effects, then tip number one is something for you. You have to make sure Mercury GPU acceleration is enabled. This drastically increases your processing speed. Now, how can you do this? Well, click on the rocket icon you can find in the project panel. In the new pop-up window, you can now enable the right setting. Tip number two is knowing when to use 8-bit, 16-bit or 32-bit. Before any explanation, you can find the indication of the bit depth at the bottom of your project panel. And clicking on it will open up a pop-up window where you can change the bit depth. 8-bit is the standard, which is very good for 2D motion design. But when you start using gradients, glow or any type of manipulation like the levels or curves effects, then it's wise to use a 16-bit composition. Now, if you want to do super precise compositing work, then it's best to use the 32-bit setting. But to be honest, I never really used that setting because it's a bit overkill. With the third trick, you can save time when exporting by making an output template and set it as the default. First, let's make the template. I simply add a composition to the render queue, then next to the output module I can click on the drop down arrow. In the drop down menu you can see the make template option. This will open up a new pop up window, here we just have to click on edit and now we can set our template settings, like the codec, alpha layer and so on. Of course also give it a name to keep everything organized. Now if you now choose your new template in the drop down menu while holding the control or command key, it will automatically change to the default export setting and you can test it by adding a new composition composition to your render queue. Tip number four, we're staying in the exporting team. When you have multiple compositions and you want to render them all at once, it's always a hassle to set the export location, as you can set them all at once. Very irritating. A fix for this is to add only one composition, set the location for it and then add the other comps. Now the location is set perfectly for every comp. Easy peasy. Now the next trick is super handy if you want to use a looping clip. You can of course duplicate it a hundred times and distribute it across your timeline. But this is very messy, so right click on the clip in question and go to time. Then choose enable time remapping. This will do absolutely nothing but give us the opportunity to add an expression to the keyframe time remap property. We just give it a simple loop out expression. Then we extend the layer and voila, endless loop. And now I want to reveal a little secret I have how I became a great motion designer. Well, by using Skillshare. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. In the past, I seriously leveled up my editing techniques by learning advanced motion design techniques with classes on Skillshare. That way, I mastered this skill in no time. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. Skillshare can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passions, or side hustles to the next level. Now, they have tons of editing and motion design classes that you can explore. These classes will absolutely level up your projects and skills. You can also learn more about how storytelling works, which is crucial if you want to create compelling videos. You can even learn how to be a YouTube success, just like MKBHD. As I mentioned before, the lesson I found most helpful for my motion designer career is animating with ease from Jake Bartlett. This class has leveled up my work a lot. First, you will learn everything about the basics, and once you understand them, you will learn the juicy stuff like advanced keyframing, loops and whatnot. Definitely worth checking out. Now, besides animating classes, you can learn other skills. For example, to increase your productivity. Ali Abdal has a class about productivity for creators. This is extremely useful for our tutorials, but you can learn a lot from it as well. I mean, you've got to learn how to promote your own work on social media. This can be the start of your successful video career. Now, 2025 is here and it's time to become a better version of yourself, so go browse through the endless classes on Skillshare and I'll promise you'll find a lot that will level you up in this new year. Oh, and the first 500 people to use my link in the description below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today because man, you can learn a lot in a month and it's for free. So again, link down below. Illustrator and After Effects go hand in hand. Using vectorized files is something you do a lot in After Effects, but sometimes these vectors look very pixelated. Disgusting. But with tip number six and a simple click of a button, this is fixed. Just click the sun icon or the continuously rasterize button and boom, fixed. Or if you want to take it a step further, you can also change the Illustrator file into shapes by right clicking on it, going to create and choose create shapes from vector layer. And now you have total control over your
Mario Vector file. Snap! We're already at tip number 7. Sometimes you have trouble with positioning your layers. I know, I also went through the pain. Measuring and tweaking the position of one element so it aligns with the other. Well, all you have to do is enable the snapping option in your toolbar on top and all your problems are gone. Now your selected layer will snap correspondingly with other layers when moved around. Okay, tip 8 is something you probably won't use that often but it's still good to know. Masking effects and not the clip. Let's say I want to add a Lumetri effect only to the face of my subject. Well, you can of course duplicate the clip, add a Lumetri effect and mask it. But there's a better way. Just create a mask on the desired layer and open up the layer properties. Open up the effect properties and go all the way down to the compositing options. Here click on the plus icon and voila, it's masked. Everybody has seen tip number 9 by accident, but never knew what it was. When you press and hold the tab key, you get this pop-up window. This is a flowchart of your composition structure. If you have a main comp with a couple of pre-comps in it, and pre-comps in those pre-comps, you get to see this in a blink of an eye. Of course, if you click on them, you can also quickly navigate throughout your comps, saving you a lot of time. And now for the last tip, using the built-in After Effects templates. With the newest update, the library has again expanded. You can find text animations that will speed up your motion design or animated backgrounds, but also animation presets that come in handy with VFX, like the blinking opacity preset. This is one you can use to mimic a faulty light bulb. As you can see, the possibilities are endless. Voila, our 10 hacks are stuck in your brain. And if you want to learn more hacks, check out the video here on my left. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Skillshare for the support and see you next time.